Hello, I'm Dan Reneke with Unknown Media. Now today I'd like to talk to you about the best aperture and shutter speed to use for indoor photography. Now, this is somewhat of a balancing act and there's a lot of give and take. I personally don't like to go under a 50 on my shutter speed because anything below that, if people are moving in the shot or if I'm not too stable with the camera, you're actually gonna be risking a lot of motion blur. Now, as far as the aperture goes, sometimes you are gonna be limited by your lens, but I tend to try to open it up as much as I possibly can indoors. Now, with this, you're gonna get a lot shallower depth of field and it's gonna be hard to get real crisp uh, pictures of people, but with a lot of practice, you'll start to get the hang of it a lot more and you're gonna be able to grab a lot sharper focus. Now, the thing about indoor photography is usually you're gonna be fighting low light situations. And if you're fighting low light situations, you tend to raise the ISO almost immediately to just brighten up the overall image. But when doing this, you run the risk of adding a lot of grain to the images. So what I do with indoor photography, I try to keep the ISO as low as I possibly can with keeping the aperture and the shutter speed in mind, keeping my shutter speed anywhere around the 50 range and then opening up the aperture as wide as I can as well as keeping the ISO as low as I possibly can. It's somewhat of a bouncing act and it may take a little bit of practice, but once you do it, your images will come out a lot crisper, a lot cleaner, and you're gonna be happy with the results. That is how I adjust my aperture and shutter speed for indoor photography. I'm Dan Renneke, and remember, take your best shot.